Good morning, Reptilians. Welcome and welcome back to the channel. I'm Elle and this is Elle's Reptiles. This week we're doing a video that all of a sudden I got like three questions for all at the same time and I thought that it would be a fantastic video idea. One of the messages that I got for this actually said, can you make this to a video? So here we are. We are going to be talking about leopard gecko heating and lighting. Before we get started, this video is sponsored by iHeartGecko, so make sure to stay until the end of the video to find out all about this awesome company. Let's get started. So first we're going to talk about your heating options. There's a lot of different options to heat your leopard gecko's tank. So it makes a lot of sense that there is so much confusion on how to heat your leopard gecko's tank. So what we're going to do is just kind of go through each one and just talk about their pros and cons so you can make the best decision for how you want to heat your animal's tank. First one that we're going to talk about is heat pads. Heat pads for a very long time was like the gold standard of heating leopard gecko tanks. I still use a heat pad in one of my leopard gecko's tanks because frankly they're super easy to install and to use use but please keep in mind that heat pads have to be used with thermostats they can get very very hot so the biggest pro in my opinion to heat pads is that they allow your leopard gecko to hide because you are putting that heat pad under their hot hide so they can actually go in there and hide and still get the heat that they need without feeling too exposed or feeling that they have to expose themselves to warm up. This is especially helpful for super shy leopard geckos, especially if we talk about like rescues. And it's super helpful for babies because baby leopard geckos tend to just be very, very shy for quite a while. Heat pads can also be used at night because they do not put off any kind of of light all day all night they have a spot where they can go and they can be warm and heat pads last for forever I have heat pads in this room that I've had for three or four years and they still function brand new I've had two thermostats go out on me in the entirety of the six years I've lived in this house so as a duo heat pads and thermostats tend to last for years and years and years as with everything on this list there are also cons the first one is that this is only going to put out heat in a very small area. So if you're trying to use a heat pad to heat an entire tank, you're probably not going to have much luck unless it is summertime. Like was very first mentioned with heat pads, another con is that they have to be used with a thermostat. Heat pads get very, very hot if they're not regulated by a thermostat. This is another expense and thermostats aren't the easiest to find. And if you are able to find them out and about, usually they are pretty expensive. I get all mine from Amazon. So I pay, I think they're usually $18, $19. So it's super cheap. They get here pretty fast, but it is another expense. And if that thermostat goes out, you are stuck waiting a couple days to get one. So huge con there. Next, let's talk about just normal halogen basking lights. This is a super, super popular option for the vast majority of reptiles when we talk about heating their tanks. The reasoning for that is probably related to the biggest pro here, which is that any and every pet store is going to have basking bulbs and even places like Walmart now have basking bulbs. There's a tank up here with a baby king snake in it. I needed a basking bulb super quickly. My mom was at Walmart. She went to go check and they have basking bulbs and this basking bulb has actually been functioning pretty well. It's always a pro to be able to run out to any store and buy something that you need when you need it. Another pro, the temperature can be adjusted with a clamp lamp with a dimmable switch. So if it is summertime, you need to turn it down you can do that if it is winter time you need to turn it up you can do that so the one bulb could theoretically last throughout the year and these can encourage your leopard gecko to come out and bask if they are required to come out and be under the basking spot to get their heat to properly digest their food it can encourage that to happen but on that same note it also is going to force your leopard gecko out to bask even if they are shy and not comfortable with it. So that is the number one con. With a basking bulb, a lot of times it's also a little bit harder to get the actual hot hide to warm up as much. These also cannot be used at night. You should not be using any kind of light in your leopard gecko's tank at nighttime unless you're using another form of heat as well at nighttime your leopard gecko does not have heat normally this is okay leopard geckos are fine with a slight temperature drop at nighttime but when we start looking into winter time you're gonna need supplemental heat basking bulbs do tend to go out pretty often they're just kind of up in the air on how long they last i've had basking bulbs last for eight months and i've had basking bulbs last for two 
two days. Definitely a con, definitely very inconvenient. Make sure that you either have extra bulbs on hand or you know where to get more bulbs if you need to. Next up, we have deep heat projectors. This is an option that I have been using lately with multiple of my animals, and I adore these. The ones that I use are made by Arcadia, and as the name suggests, these bulbs are going to project heat deeply into your reptile's muscles. So jumping right into the pros of this, these bulbs are going to emit IRA and IRB. It's going to super closely replicate the heat from sunlight and it's going to do it without emitting any light. That means that you can use this deep heat projector day and night. It also has a very wide heat output, which in my experience has made it a lot easier to actually heat up those hot hides. This also means that they do an amazing job of raising the ambient temperature in your tank and they are supposed to last for up to a year. But as amazing as these are, as with everything else, there are cons. The first con is that these things get hot. They need to be used with a dimmable switch or a rheostat, thermostat, something to make sure that it's not overheating that area. And the other two cons, they're not the easiest to find with an item not being the easiest to find. That also means that they are relatively expensive. They're going to be about the same price as buying a heat pad and a thermostat at the same time, but they are quite a bit more than just going and buying an $8 basking bulb. So definitely keep that in mind. But in my opinion, they are very much worth it. Next, we have ceramic heat emitters. Ceramic heat emitters are generally, usually always used as supplemental heat. So all those other things that we talked about where I mentioned needing supplemental heat, like heat pads, basking bulbs at nighttime, ceramic heat emitters are usually what people use for those. Pros, super easy to find. You can get them at Amazon, you can get them at pet stores, you can get them at farm supply stores. A lot of people use these for their chickens and ducks and things. They don't put out any light, so again, supplemental heat they can be used day and night and they last a long time i've had a ceramic heat emitter that i've been using in morty's tank for about two years now and it's still going strong but they also put out a lot of heat that could be good or it also could be a con because these just like the deep heat projectors need to be in a dome with a dimmable switch these things can get very very hot and you don't want to cause the ambient temperature in that tank to raise so high that it's dangerous and the last in the heating section is mercury vapor bulbs. These are on the list because these have been around for forever and people always ask about mercury vapor bulbs. Since they've been around forever, they are super readily available and they also produce UVB, which could be helpful. However, I do not recommend using these with leopard geckos. Mercury vapor bulbs are made to put off a lot of heat. Generally, using mercury vapor bulbs is going to be geared at large reptiles. I highly suggest just for the safety of that animal, avoiding these if if you can. Next up, let's talk about UVB lighting. UVB lighting for a very long time was not used for leopard geckos and it was deemed that they didn't need them at all. And that's because for a long time, people thought that leopard geckos were nocturnal. Leopard geckos are crepuscular. During dawn and dusk, there is not a lot of sunlight coming through. With that being said, UVB light is not necessary for your leopard gecko to live. It is necessary, however, if you want to provide the healthiest environment for your leopard gecko. Studies have shown that UVB lights do positively affect leopard geckos. It helps with digestion and it also helps with their activity levels. So I highly suggest using UVB lights for leopard geckos. I personally experienced a positive difference when I added UVB light to Percy's tank. So I use them for both of my leopard geckos. They don't need high outputs of UVB light though, like something like a blue tongue skink or a bearded dragon would need. They just need a little bit because again, dawn and dusk, a little bit of UVB light though does not mean cheap UVB lights. You should still go with the recommended brands of UVB lighting, which is Arcadia and Reptisun. They need between 5% and 7%. So just an example that would look like Arcadia Shade Dwellers or when I got new lights for winter, they were out of those. So instead I got the Arcadia 6% and be sure to place these at the appropriate distance distance away from where the animal usually lays out. I will put right here reptiviles.com's chart of example distances. Also, as with all UVB lights, make sure you are replacing them on time. So that is usually depending on the brand between every six and 12 months. Quickly, we're gonna go over some necessary tools that you need in 
properly heating and lighting your tanks. Number one, a temperature gun. Temperature guns are important because temperature guns are going to use a laser to get the exact temperature of the spot that you pointed at. This is important to measure basking spot temperatures. You also will need a thermometer, but a thermometer is not going to actually measure the temperature on that basking spot, which can be 20 to 40 degrees higher than the ambient temperature. You do need that thermometer to measure the ambient temperature. It's also a very important tool because while it's not getting exact spot temperatures, it is going to make sure that either the ambient temperature in the tank is warm enough during the winter time or during the summertime, or if you're using BP projectors, ceramic heat emitters, that the air temperature isn't too hot for that animal because too high of an ambient temperature is dangerous for your leopard gecko. Although it's not a necessary tool, a very helpful tool is a solar meter. Solar meters measure UVB output of UVB lights, and that could help you get the appropriate distance from the light to the basking spots. And it also will let you know when it's time to replace that light because as time goes on, the light is going to put out less and less UV. And if you have a solar meter to measure the amounts, you'll see when it gets too low and it needs to be replaced. Not necessary. I just got one in the last year, but it is very helpful. And of course we have to have a quick section of what not to use. Color lights, especially red and blue lights, these lights can harm your animal's eyes. For a long time it was said that reptiles cannot see colors. They can't see the color red. Sometimes it's said that they can't see the color blue. And so these lights are okay to use. That is not true. Even if animals couldn't see the colors of lights, they are still seeing that light is coming through. However, reptiles very much can see colors. Reptiles can see more colors and light wavelengths than we can. Kind of along that same line, night lights. All the lights need to be turned off at night. They do not need lights at nighttime. It messes up their day night cycle. If you are turning on night lights, turn off the lights at night. Heat rocks. Heat rocks are dangerous. Heat rocks supposedly have an internal thermostat. However, those internal thermostats malfunction very often. The heat that a heat rock puts out is also very uneven. So even if the thermostat is showing that it is 90 degrees in this spot, up here could be 120 and your animal is just laying on that. They are a huge cause of burns and injuries to reptiles. And the last one is anything that produces a large amount of heat without using a thermostat or a rheostat or a dimmer switch or something. We have recommended basking and hot side and cold side ambient temperatures for a reason those animals need those temperatures. But that is it. That is all that I have for this week's video. Hopefully it was helpful. Hopefully if you are trying to figure out how to heat or light your lever geckos tank, maybe you walked away with information on how you can best do that for your animal. As I said at the beginning of this video, this video is sponsored by iHeartGeckos. iHeartGeckos is such an awesome company that does this super cool thing where they make these conversion kits for tanks. Conversion kits are essentially just a door with a whole bunch of ventilation on it that you put onto a tank. Any glass tank that you may have laying around that you've had for a while that you just got super cheap, you just put it on there with a little bit of silicone and it makes a front opening tank for your animal because reptiles like being reached in at from the front and not from the top like you are a predator. It makes them feel more comfortable and it's a very inexpensive option for you because front opening tanks at pet stores are very expensive. This is a very inexpensive option, which is why I love it so much. These kits are very high quality. They last for a very long time. Mine haven't yellowed or gotten scratched up or anything like that. They're just awesome. Make sure if you do have an order one of these, you leave else reptiles in the how did you hear about us box. That way they know that you guys are coming from here. Thank you so much to iHeartGeckos for sponsoring this video. As always, if you have not already, please feel free to follow me on my other socials and like, subscribe, and hit that bell for notifications every single time I put out a new video, which is every Sunday and some Wednesdays. This week's Instagram shout out is here, and this week's subscriber shout out is here. Thank you both so much for liking and following and subscribing and commenting and sharing and all of that jazz. You are the bee's knees. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a fantastic day. Bye. All right. Test, test. Test, 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 test. Okay, that is right. Make sure to stay until the end of the video to find out how you can. Okay. Before we get started, this video is sponsored. These also cannot be used at light. You, at light. These also cannot. Arcadia project. Arcadia products are much more relevant. During dawn and dusk, there's not a lot of sunlight coming through. Reptiles can see more 
colors and lights. Reptiles can see more colors and for your animal.